Hi, I am Andrea Wolf, and I'm a registered dietitian at Stanford Healthcare. I'm going to discuss protein during this talk today and review the functions of protein, sources of protein, and considerations of protein intake specific for chronic kidney disease. Before we get into specifics about protein in our kidney, let's review why protein is important. Proteins are essential for various critical functions in the body. They help with muscle contractions to generate force and movement required for walking and running. Proteins like collagen provide structural integrity to tissue, skin, and bone. Proteins are vital for a healthy immune system, and antibodies are specialized proteins and act as, a act as the body's defense against bacteria and viruses. Many proteins act as catalysts for biochemical reactions to help with digestion and metabolism. Hemoglobin is a protein that transports oxygen in the blood. And signal, signaling proteins transmit messages within and between cells to help with processes like cell growth. Therefore, proteins are vital for our health, and it's an essential nutrient our body needs to function properly. There are different types of protein. Protein can be found in animal or plant-based foods. Sources of animal protein are poultry, such as chicken, turkey, red meat like pork and beef. Also, eggs and dairy products contain protein. Plant-based proteins consist of beans, legumes, nuts, seeds, and even whole grains contain some proteins. For your kidneys, choosing more plant-based proteins may be beneficial in that many plant-based foods contain antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds that can help reduce inflammation in the body. Chronic inflammation is a risk factor for kidney damage and other chronic diseases such as heart disease. Also, plant-based proteins produce less acid during metabolism, reducing stress on the kidneys. Another benefit is that often plant-based proteins contain more fiber, which can help with digestion, regulate blood sugar levels, reduce absorption of certain toxins, and support overall health. The goal is to get in minimally processed plant-based proteins half of the time. So you don't need to go full vegetarian and avoid all animal proteins, but trying to choose more plant-based proteins may help out your kidneys. Again, focus on these minimally processed plant proteins and be cautious of some of the plant-based meats, burgers that have undergone a lot of processing and contain a lot of additives that include potassium, preservatives, and sodium. So let's get into portions. For your kidneys, it's recommended to follow a lower moderate protein intake diet because when your body uses protein, it produces waste and the waste is removed by the kidneys. Too much protein can make the kidneys work harder. So with chronic kidney disease, you may need to eat less protein. But again, protein is essential for a lot of functions in the body. So we wanna make sure that we're getting enough protein in. The dietary protein intake should be personalized based on factors like age, the physical activity level, individual nutritional requirements, and stage of chronic kidney disease. So I do re recommend discussing with a dietitian what your specific protein needs are. If you're over 60 and especially over 75 years old, over-restricting protein may not be beneficial to maintain muscle mass, which is important for longevity. Thus, you may want to add in a little bit more protein, but still avoid excessive protein intake. Again, I recommend working with a dietitian to figure out your specific protein needs. The general recommendations for protein and kidney disease are to keep animal proteins such as meat or fish to about two to three ounces or about the size of a deck of cards or about the palm of your hand for a meal. So if you're used to eating an eight ounce or a half a pound steak, maybe you set a goal of cutting it in half. So that'd be four ounces and then kind of work your way down to two to three ounces for the meal. You could add in extra non-starchy veggies to your plate or bowl to help add an extra fiber so you can feel more satiated. Let's say you are already pretty good at the portions, but having animal protein for all of your meals. So what you could do is maybe you set a goal around one or two times per week to have a vegetarian meal and using a plant-based protein and kind of get started from there. You could choose plant-based proteins such as beans or tofu or tempeh um, for your meal. 
For plant-based proteins, about a half a cup of cooked beans or the size of your fist or a quarter cup of nuts is one serving. Again, the goal is to try to choose plant-based proteins about half of the time. The slide on the right shows different sources of plant-based proteins. So here you can see beans, nuts, seeds, tofu, whole grains, tempeh. Some people with chronic kidney disease may need to restrict potassium intake due to elevated potassium labs. Again, not everyone with chronic kidney disease may need to watch their potassium, and it's not advised to do so unless you need to, since potassium is beneficial for your heart health. If you need to watch your potassium, you can still eat beans. Fava beans, black-eyed peas, chickpeas, mung beans are some of the lower moderate sources of potassium. They have less than 300 milligrams per half cup serving. Soaking and rinsing beans may also help reduce some of the potassium. Also, it's important to remember that the body doesn't absorb all of the potassium from these plant-based foods. An absorption rate of potassium from plant sources is about 65 to 70 percent. However, this can vary depending on the specific food and the cooking method. My colleague Alex has a great video on potassium and can check that out if you want more information. Phosphorus is another mineral we may need to watch with kidney disease. The good news is, is that the phosphorus in beans is only about 30 to 50% absorbed versus absorption rate in animal sources is about 60 to 80%. Just another reason to get in more plant-based proteins. So how are we gonna get in more plant-based protein? So here are some ideas for including more into your meals. So number one, beans. Beans are versatile plant protein. They're great for the kidneys and heart health because they're rich in fiber, antioxidants, and packed with vitamins and nutrients. Just a reminder, half a cup is a serving of beans. Instead of meat, you could add beans to salads, soups, burritos. Consider making a burrito or grain bowl with beans and veggies. You can make a vegetarian and chili with just beans. Edamame is also an excellent whole foods plant protein that can be added to salads, stir fries, or to just have for a snack. You can add hummus to sandwiches instead of turkey slices or have a pita wrap with veggies and hummus. Tofu can replace meat in curries or stir fry. You can even use crumbled tofu and pasta sauce instead of ground meat. Tofu scramble is also a great alternative to scrambled eggs. Nuts and whole grains such as quinoa, almonds, walnuts, pecans can replace meat and salads and provide texture, protein, and fiber. Pecans, walnuts, chia seeds are lower potassium nut and seed choices if you need to watch the potassium. Nutritional yeast is a deactivated yeast that contains five grams of protein and two tablespoons. It can be added to rice, eggs, pasta. It's also good on popcorn. It has this umami cheesy flavor. You can also swap lentils for meats and stews, curries, salads, soups. So there are lots of ways to add in plant proteins instead of animal proteins to your meals. And I hope this gives you some ideas on how to do that. Additional considerations. So watch the sodium. Be cautious of high sodium protein sources such as salted nuts, canned fish or beans with salt added. So again, we want to focus on these minimally processed meats. Um, choose packaged or canned foods without salt added. Add flavor to your food with herbs, spices, vinegar, squeeze a lemon instead of the salt. Also, watch potassium only if needed. So for beans, chickpeas are lower in potassium. Walnuts, pecans, macadamia nuts are lower potassium nuts. Ground flaxseed, chia, pumpkin are low moderate potassium seeds. Eggs are also a great low potassium protein choice. In summary, protein is important for our body because it's critical for numerous functions. However, when it comes to our kidneys, more is not better. We want to keep our animal-based proteins to about two to three ounces, again, size of a deck of cards or palm of your hand per meal, and should try to add in plant-based proteins about half of the time. Consider having beans, tofu, nuts, and seeds with your lunch, and then maybe you have two or three ounces of chicken or fish with your dinner. So that would be having a plant-based protein for half of your meals. Keep protein intake to about a quarter of your plate and watch the portions. This may help reduce putting extra burden on the kidneys and potentially slowing the progression of kidney disease. That concludes this talk about protein and kidney health. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen.